Hey, today I'm talking about the best foods and nutrients for bone health. We really wanna make sure we're taking good care of our bones. That's what holds us upright, makes us really be able to function the way that we need to. And there's so many people out there that are dealing with osteoporosis and osteomalacia where they have weakening of their bones. And this is what we need to focus on when it comes to our diet and our lifestyle. So whenever I think about bone health or bone loss, I think number one, is this related to inflammation, which oftentimes is at the root Okay, when you have chronic inflammation, that's gonna tear down those, the bone tissue and the, the bone tissue is gonna become more catabolic where it's more of a breakdown process rather than anabolic where we're building up. So inflammation is a key factor. Number two, is this individual consuming enough of the key nutrients needed for healthy bone tissue? What are those nutrients? Well, most people would say calcium and that is one of the most important because calcium is the key mineral that's in your bone, but you have a whole lot of other things. Magnesium is super important. Phosphorus, very, very important. Silica, very, very important mineral for good bone health. Potassium, sodium, manganese, all important minerals. You also have things like vitamin D and vitamin K2, which work together to act like a vacuum cleaner and pull calcium and other minerals out of the bloodstream and into the bones where they're needed. So without enough vitamin D, enough K, vitamin K2, you can take all the other minerals, but you're not gonna get them actually into the bones. So vitamin D, vitamin K2, D, D3 and K2, super critical. Protein, you need to have protein because that's the actual backbone of the bones themselves, right? That's actually the structural component of the bones, it's protein. So if you're not consuming enough protein or you're not absorbing enough protein because you don't have enough stomach acid, you have leaky gut, you have poor digestive mechanics, Therefore, you're not absorbing enough of these amino acids and enough protein, that can also cause problems with bone tissue formation. So we gotta make sure we're addressing that. Many of you guys have probably heard of things like collagen and collagen peptides. Collagen is the base foundation for bone tissue. And then of course, it's got a mineral matrix with it. So we wanna be consuming a lot of the same amino acids that are made up in collagen, things like glycine, proline, hydroxyproline. We wanna be consuming those in our diet. So that's a question you gotta ask, are you consuming enough? And I'm gonna go through some of the foods that you wanna really be focusing on as we go on here. And then vitamin C, because in order to produce collagen, we need amino acids, but we also need vitamin C, very critical for the production of that protein backbone for the minerals to form bone. We need the vitamin C. So a lot of key nutrients that we need and how are we gonna get those? We'll go through that with the best foods. I've got six best foods that are animal-based, six best foods that are plant-based. So whether you're you know, a plant-based individual or if you're on a carnivore diet or animal-based diet, you should be able to consume these particular foods and, and, and get the nutrients you need for good, healthy bone tissue. So number three is loading. So not only do we need the nutrients, but we need loading. Perfect example of this is the astronauts. When they're out in outer space, they don't have gravity coming down, putting a force on their bones. And so if they're in outer space for a long enough period of time, their muscles atrophy because they're not getting resistance and they will actually get a lot of bone loss as well. So it's really important that we have to have loading with gravity. So what does that mean? If you're just sitting around all day, you're sedentary, you're not exercising, you're not providing enough of the stimulus. You need that loading, mechanical loading, in order to stress the bones so that they build, right? So that the body adapts and says, okay, I need strong, healthy bones, and it will adapt. So are you exercising? Are you moving? Are you doing some sort of high impact, some sort of impact? Doesn't necessarily need to be high impact, but some level of impact and stress on those bones. Could just be taking a walk or dancing or something along those lines. Um, and that's gonna help stress those bones and allow the body to adapt and create more bone tissue. And then number four is rest and recovery. Are you sleeping well? Are you under chronic stress? Does, does your brain think that you're in a really traumatic situation all the time? Are you chronically stressed? Are you dealing with PTSD? Um, you know, are, are, are you taking time to unwind, to recover, to think thoughts of, you know, peace and joy and, and happiness. Um, and if that's the case, then that is providing an environment for your body to heal and to repair properly. If you're constantly stressed, you're not giving the body the opportunity to heal and repair properly. It's gonna instead create short-term scar tissue, 
which is weak tissue, not strong tissue, but it provides a short-term solution. And ultimately, if that's all we're counting on is short-term solutions in our bones, we're gonna create very brittle bones. So we need time, we need recovery, good sleep, good stress management in order to give our body the environment to heal properly. So that's all key. Now let's talk about the foods. From an animal perspective, these are the best foods right here. Bone broth, why? Because bone broth is rich in collagen protein, collagen peptides, has all the key amino acid matrixes, the um, hydroxyproline, proline, glycine, all these key amino acids needed for our body to form collagen. It also has key minerals, magnesium, calcium, right? All the different minerals I talked about, phosphorus, manganese, all found in your, your bone broth. So anytime you get an opportunity to have bone broth, drink bone broth, make bone broth at home, great source. You can also find bone broth proteins or collagen proteins that have a lot of the same nutrients that you can put in a protein shake or in water or something like that and get these bone building nutrients into your system. So that's key. Sardines, you can get a can of sardines and it's got small little bones that are easy to eat. They don't, they're not gonna cause you to choke or cause pain in your system, but they actually have little tiny fish bones that you'll consume and you'll get the full mineral matrix, the collagen peptides, the same structures, the same nutrients needed for that small fish to create bones and create a skeleton. That's what we need for our bones. So when we're consuming it, we're gonna get those same nutrients needed to produce healthy bones for us. So sardines are great. Seafood in general is gonna be rich in you know, a wide variety of different key nutrients, key, key minerals, as well as the protein that we need, omega-3 fats to reduce inflammation in our system. So seafood can be really great. Grass-fed meats, again, great uh, protein complexes that are in there, lots of great minerals that are in our grass-fed meats. So key there, eggs, another great one. Uh, pasture-raised eggs, that's where you get vitamin D, vitamin K2 in there as well, particularly in the yolk. You also have things like biotin. Biotin is, is another B vitamin, actually, that plays a role in bone formation, healthy skin. Um, and so you have that in there, choline for healthy cell membranes, a lot of key nutrients in eggs. And then, of course, dairy, ideally grass-fed dairy, and that's gonna provide calcium, magnesium, a whole bunch of these different mineral matrix, protein, a lot of the key compounds that we need for healthy bones. Now, let's talk about plant foods. Celery, celery is a great one. I mean, you think about a celery stalk, you grab a celery stalk, it reminds me of a long bone, right? A humerus or the femur bone. And so it has got sodium, it's got silica, which is this key mineral needed for healthy bones. Silica is rich, celery is rich in silica. Also, cucumbers are, are a rich source of silica as well. Arugula, arugula has, has uh, silica in there as well, and that's why those are some of the best plant foods for healthy bones. So celery's also got the sodium, it's got a great mineral complex in there. Seaweed, seaweed is rich in these fucoidins that actually have been shown to reduce inflammation on the bone tissue. And so seaweed is one of the best things. Great mineral matrix in seaweed, definitely something to consume to get a lot of minerals into your system and reduce inflammation, particularly inflammation around the bones and joints. So it can be really powerful there. Avocados, avocados are rich in potassium, rich in different B vitamins like folate. They've got phosphorus in them, copper, um, lutein, zeaxanthin, all these powerful compounds that help reduce inflammation in the system and help support healthy bone tissue. Um, I mentioned cucumbers, arugula uh, as well, very rich in, arugula is very rich in vitamin C. It's a low oxalate, dark green leafy vegetable. We know oxalates can, if we're consuming them in a high abundance, they can cause more pain, more inflammation in our system, increase our risk of kidney stones, and they also help pull calcium out of the bloodstream as well. So arugula is a low oxalate, dark green leafy, where you're gonna get a lot of the chlorophyll, the, 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 the folate, um, B vitamins, the antioxidant benefits that come with dark green leafies without the negative effects of oxalates. So I love arugula. Um, cucumbers, I mentioned, they have got that silica in there. And then you've got extra virgin olive oil, which is one of the most powerful anti-inflammatory things you could put in your body, particularly if you get it fresh pressed, okay, from unripe olives. So like green olives, these kind of unripe olives. And the way you know it is it's got like this kind of bitter, like bitter aftertaste typically to it. And that's a sign that they use the green olives and it's high in polyphenols like oleocanthals. Oleocanthals they call nature's ibuprofen because it's so powerful at reducing inflammation in the system. 
So extra virgin olive oil, really powerful for downregulating inflammation and helping support healthy bone tissue. So these would be the foods that I would focus on. Obviously, I may have mentioned a food that your body doesn't respond well to. Maybe you have a sensitivity or an allergy to, or like whenever you eat dairy, you feel more inflamed, or eggs, you feel more inflamed. Then avoid that food, right? If you feel more inflamed when you consume a certain food, avoid it, or you could even try getting a better source. Maybe you're eating um, the normal commercial raised eggs, and you haven't tried organic free range eggs. So maybe try that first. See if maybe it's just a, a pesticide load thing because the, they're giving the chickens a whole bunch of different pesticides, and herbicides. Maybe you're responding to that. Maybe it is the egg. So you gotta kinda test and see um, if it's just kind of a low grade sensitivity. If it's a full blown allergy that's life threatening, I would just avoid that food altogether. So these are the top 12 foods. Doesn't mean they're the top 12 for you, but for the general population, that's gonna be the top 12 foods to consume for healthy bone tissue. Find the foods that you enjoy and that work best for you to support your healthy bone structure. Don't forget about keeping inflammation under control, keeping blood sugar, reducing toxic load, reducing infections, all important for keeping inflammation under control. Don't forget about getting the nutrients, the proper loading, and the proper rest and recovery. And if you do those things, you're gonna have good, healthy, strong, and stable bones. Be blessed, we'll see you in a future video.